So welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us for the June Inside Look session with uh, the Colorado Rockies today. We are so, so excited and so honored to be in conversation um, with Erin Hodges, the Digital Communications Manager who does all things social um, at the Colorado Rockies, and the team photographer, Kyle Cooper. Um, you can see them in this a wonderful photo, two different headshots, and a little bit of a preview of the campaign uh, that they will be sharing with us today. But I just will share a little bit about myself, about the company that you are joining for this lovely webinar, Photo Shelter for Brands, and a bit about how we arrived at this discussion. So welcome again, my name is Larissa Green. Uh, we are going to be talking to the Colorado Rockies team today about how they inherited a two year old campaign on a tight deadline, created some incredibly conceptual visual storytelling for a, a campaign uh, that was launching new uniforms for the Colorado Rockies after 20 years of rocking their uh, traditional uniform. I mean, this is an incredible, this will be an incredible session to learn about uh, how professional sports brands rebrand, but also uh, you can get some really great best practices, tips, innovative ideas for how your team can uh, construct a story around rebranding elements um, and creative elements for your organization or brand as well. Um, like I mentioned, today we're chatting with two crucial team members um, from the Colorado Rockies creative marketing team, Erin Hodges, digital communications manager and manager of all things social, and team photographer Kyle Cooper, who recently actually moved into this role after being the assistant team photographer for the past six years. Um, the Colorado Rockies has used Photo Shelter for eight seasons now, so we're really excited to hear how they have, um, you know, built upon the workflow processes that they uh, began eight years ago, how they've optimized them and how they're really enhancing uh, their creative marketing strategy and their reach through repurposing all different kinds of content. Um, They'll also walk through their media team's game day content production workflow. Um, and we're gonna be seeing some incredible images. Um, like this. I mean, look at this background. It looks fake, but it is so real. And we can't wait to hear about the location scouting story as well. Um, how they really um, enhanced the experience for these um, these team players um, and how they really utilized the, the team players brands themselves and connected it with their hometown pride of Colorado. Uh, the uniform is incredible and we're going to hear so much more. Um, before we get into uh, introducing uh, Kyle and Erin and bringing them to the stage for this wonderful webinar, um, what's better than virtual networking? I mean, you get to meet new people and scope out new business opportunities from the comfort of your desk. Um, so if you're so inclined and so interested, uh, please join the Photo Shelter for Brand Slack community um, by using your phone to check out this QR code here um, and or type in bit.ly backslash PSB Slack uh, to join the Photo Shelter for Brands Slack community where over 1400 creative marketers chat throughout the weeks and days of the year to inspire each other, share behind the scenes production uh, insights and, and snippets back behind the scenes of photos um, and clips and also ask each other, you know, what's the best way to use their dam? What's a better way to use their digital asset management tool? Um, we are going to be using the live chat channel in Slack today to be fielding questions and taking your questions and, and comments during the presentation um, so we can share them with these speakers. Um, and really, it's just an open open sharing uh, forum for you all, for all about 100 of you who are on this call today. Uh, so let's get into it. Um, I'm going to now introduce and bring up Erin uh, and Kyle. And I will also share with you today that if you are so interested in learning a little bit more about content management, um, about how your team can do some really amazing workflow enhancements and optimizations like Kyle and Aaron have over the past couple of years here, um, we will be sharing a, a link for you to uh, work with us um, and just, just chat a little bit about how you're doing things over on your brand and organization side. So 
Thank you so much, Kyle and Aaron, for being here. Can't wait to hear what you have to share today and see the awesome images that you all created. Uh, thank you both. Of course. Thanks for having us. Yeah, excited to chat. Me too. All, right. all right. I will peace out and let you all do your thing. Thank you. Of course. Sweet. Well, hello, everyone. Um, I'm Kyle, uh, the team photographer at the Colorado Rockies. And I'm Aaron Hodges. I'm the digital communications manager here at the Rockies and oversee all of our pretty much anything that's digital and tells people anything. I pretty much oversee it uh, with our entire team here in the marketing department. And so we had uh, the awesome opportunity to um, basically uh, create and execute um, and, and then get to actually see the final product on the field um, of our Colorado Rockies Nike City Connect release. Um, it was a, a big undertaking for our department that is a, a fairly small department uh, when it comes to professional sports. I think there's about eight of us in, in this side of the building. Um, um, but it was it was something that we knew uh, that we we wanted to to go big and and do do a good job with it and and with what Nike gave us um, it was pretty exciting uh, to start off uh, you know the main image here uh, you obviously see it doesn't say Denver and and so when it's when you think Nike City Connect you think uh, a city but ours says Colorado and so we had a pretty big undertaking to to connect the jersey and the brand to our entire state. Let me see. So, um, just a few details of of the jersey before we get into the nitty gritty of it. Um, on one of the shoulders, you see a, a double black diamond. Um, that kind of relates to uh, the ski industry and the ski community in Colorado. Obviously, um, there's a lot of skiing that goes on in our in our state, and double black diamond is is the hardest skiing for people who aren't familiar with skiing. Um, and so. 5280 is is the elevation of Denver. Um, the coordinates that you see there is Coors Field, and uh, Rocks is obviously for Rockies. Um, the jersey is is green, um, and if you're not from Colorado, our license plate is green and it has mountains on it. And so, um, you know, the front of our jersey is is basically uh, a very close rendering to our license plate. Um, and so, um, there below is kind of a backdrop of where we actually took photos for this shoot. Um, Welcome to Color, Colorful Colorado um, is on the jock tag. Uh, you can't really see it when the players are wearing it because they're tucking it in, but for anyone who's wearing it in the stands, I think it's a really cool part of our jersey. Um, Welcome to Colorful Colorado sign is just a really popular stop off. If you're if you're driving into the state and you see the sign, you're like, oh, I'm pull over. Everyone takes pictures in front of the Welcome to Colorful Colorado sign. So, And then um, if you've never been to Coors Field before, uh, or if you have and maybe you don't know, we have a, a line of purple uh, seats on the top of uh, the 300 section uh, and that's where uh, you can if you sit in those seats you're a mile high and so uh, all over the jersey um, there's outlining on the numbers on the sleeves um, of purple and that kind of uh, designates or, or it relates to the, the purple row that we have here at Coors Field so if you've never been to Coors Field or if you're coming soon make sure you make a trip up to the purple row you'll be officially a mile high so <laughs> Uh, we had a list of things we kind of needed to do before we even had this shoot. Um, we needed to find a location. Um, in if you watch TV, sometimes they make Denver look like it's uh, it's five minutes from the mountains, but it, it is a little bit of a hike to get to a good view uh, with mountains and snow. And so we definitely know no knew we needed to to find good mountain view, but it needed to be an hour from Denver or less. And we'll get into that later. Uh, we needed some player buy-in. Uh, we had a couple options of making the shoot happen on a game day or an off day. And so if we were going to ask for an off day with some players, that's a big ask in, in the sports world and um, and really getting players to take some time on their day off to come and take photos. Um, we definitely just needed to make sure that uh, we had everything in line. Uh, keeping the uniform a secret is, is obviously important when you're releasing a new jersey that um, that no one's really seen before. And so there was a really small team of people who who had seen the jersey. Everyone kept asking all of us questions about like, what's it, is it green? Is it say mile high? What does it say on it? And so it was kind of hard to keep a secret. And um, there were a few people that that actually saw it. And then one of the biggest thing is hoping for good weather. We did the shoot in May, and you know it it snowed the next day in Colorado. We actually had a snow out, uh, snow slash rain out. And so um, hoping for good weather for the shoot was a must. And then uh, we had to balance photo and video uh, 
JBG and crew from our uh, Rockies Vision were also up there um, making sure we had uh, pump up videos for the shoot and and stuff for the release of the of the shoot as well. So those are things we needed to do photography and video wise um, that uh, all came together in the end. Uh, Aaron, do you want to take over player buy-in? Yeah, for sure. Um, so obviously the biggest key to this is when you have to launch something that's going to be worn by the players, you absolutely kind of need the players. And for this, uh, kind of like he alluded to, we wanted to ultimately take them up to the mountains. We didn't want it to be a green screen. Like you can kind of pull it off and, and make it work, but that wasn't an ideal scenario. So we kind of had a plan A, what we really want and a plan B. And so when we went to the players, we kind of started this wet end of April. We kind of put it in their ear of like, hey, we have something coming up. It's for a Nike release. What do you feel if you had to um, like go with us on an off day? Would you even be open to it? Um, so we kind of started it early and then we worked with our PR department, which we're in the same department. Um, so that really, really helps in terms of being able to communicate with them. And we got them to kind of just continuously like talk to the guys and ultimately showing them like pictures of the areas that we want to go, showing them what this is going to be about, showing them the importance of being a part of the first jersey release for us for in 20 plus years <laughs> and kind of what it can do for their brand too. So really just trying to get them to buy into this idea of please drive an hour with us up to the mountains yeah. and, and kind of be a part of our shoot. Uh, we ultimately, went with a couple of guys, one specifically Kyle Freeland from Denver, Colorado. We definitely wanted that in there. We needed the native. It just made sense story-wise and probably a little bit easier of an ask for him since, you know, he might actually want to be a part of, you know, a City Connect launch. Uh, we also got Herman Marquez, who was last year's all-star pitcher. We got Connor Cho, who is just a fan favorite. We thought that that might be good. He's just a fun guy who wants to be a part of stuff and he was an immediate yes. He also required that his dog was able to come to the shoot. That was his ask in order for him to do it. And we absolutely obliged. You can see the pictures here that Kyle took of behind the scenes of his boxer up at the shoot, uh, which was really, really fun actually in the end. And then we also got Ryan McMahon, who was almost an all-star last year and an almost gold glover. Again, just a great personality, loves to have fun and laugh thought of this idea to hit snowballs. And so it was really just like a great group of players that we thought, you know, could be great for this and also that are going to enjoy the process of, of what this takes to do. Um, but for the these four in particular too are, are players that we all have great relationships with. We've built a lot of trust with them over the past couple of years specifically. And so in the end, we just wanted to make sure that we don't lose that trust and we get them done in an hour. We get them in and out. We get them the assets that they asked for. We get them, you know, we proved to them that this was all worth it. It was really our goal. Um, Definitely. I, th I think we did that in the end. Yeah, for sure. I mean, and we when we saw the jersey right off the bat, we knew like it would be really easy to shoot in our fountain that has a fake waterfall and a pond and a bunch of evergreen trees and some ivy. Um, but I th I think that when we all sat down, we thought the jersey deserved more than just shooting in our in our back in our backyard, basically. And so we wanted to to really take it to the mountains and have this epic like hero hero poses for these guys. And so, um, but there in the bottom of ten corners, Ellie, the wind when we got up there, there was a storm front moving in. It was about forty to fifty mile per hour wind gusts and a, probably like a thirty mile an hour like just constant wind. And Ellie's a boxer, and you can see her ears just getting totally uh, swept by the wind. Uh, we brought a box of 12 fresh baseballs, a box of pearls, and Ellie ate about eight of them while we were up there. So, and she was also really enjoying the snow, as you can see in that top right photo. So, uh, player buy-in was was definitely important, and we just just definitely wanted to make sure that uh, they had an enjoyable experience. So, if we have to ask them to do something else, they'll, they'll say yes. Um, location behind the scenes, Aaron, is this going to work? Let's see. Oh yeah, look at that. <laughs> She's not exaggerating. It was it was very very windy. I'm surprised I wasn't blowing over taking this video. So as you can imagine, like getting our guys up here too, when when you know you have these MLB players and all of a sudden they get to a shoot and it's 50 mile an hour winds, we're just like, oh my goodness, this is not gonna end well. But they trooped through it. 
here's a behind the scenes of us grabbing some video and photos. And then obviously the dog had to make the appearance in this. Um, the players just loved, loved having her around. And honestly, it, it really lightened the mood when it's cold, it's windy, and you're taking a break from, from your time in front of the camera. Uh, it was just a great experience. And again, up in the mountains, honestly didn't get more Colorado than that. <laughs> There we go. So the location was Loveland Pass, elevation 11,990 feet. Um, behind us was uh, the Continental Divide, uh, which is which is nice. Um, kind of separates this, well, the continent. Uh, <laughs> um, Captain Obvious. Uh, but uh, but it was just a really grand backdrop for, for the guys. Um, we want to make sure that there were some evergreens seen as most of the trees or most of the jersey is green. And so... Um, Harrison and I drove around about a week before the shoot trying to find a good spot. Um, we went to multiple locations. Loveland Pass was actually closed when we first started location scouting and we almost decided to head back without going up to Loveland Pass. And then we checked the website and it said it had just reopened. And so we went up there, uh, found this spot, took some videos, gave it to Corey from public relations. And he kind of sat down with all the guys and showed them the videos and some of the pictures that we took and said, this is where we want to do it. Are you in? And, and they said, uh, yes. Um, so uh, here are the jerseys taking the field. Um, the, the shoes, we didn't have the shoes at the time of the shoot. So it was really cool to see the Special City Connect shoes take, uh, take the field as well. Marquez wears these sweet kicks on the mound. Um, everyone seems to like the jerseys. Uh, even when we did our new headshots in them, they put them on. They were like, man, these feel really great. Um, and so I think it took a little getting used to for the green for them, but uh, for the most part, um, it, it's they look good on the field. They look good, and we wear them on Sundays, and then uh, whenever a player wants to wear them. So um, with good afternoon light, they really are punchy. And then um, with the good kind of dramatic light we get here at Coors Field, we're always looking forward to a really nice night game if one of the pitchers wants to wear them. All right. I'll, I'll hand this over to Erin since she's the expert here with things we need to do for social. So for us, obviously, when it comes to this launch, the most important thing is getting out the fact that we're, you know, we have all these new jerseys um, where you can buy them. But most importantly, throughout the conversations we had with Nike, it was all about with City Connect. It's how does this relate to your city or in our case, state? Uh, because we are the Colorado Rockies, not the Denver Rockies. So we had to ultimately, you know, go back to, cool, how does this relate to our state? Um, who are we as Coloradans and how is that represented in this jersey? Uh, but in terms of when we're communicating to fans, how does that look in our voice? What is our tone? What is the actual brand look and feel? And, and some other elements in that of, you know, how are we going to bring this to life? How do we share this Colorado brand uh, with the world and get people not only, of course, interested to buy the actual product, but actually buy into the story and buy into our state and our city and ultimately go back to what the jersey was all about in the first place, uh, which is the, the story. Um, so you might have seen that we kind of started this presentation going with the jersey instead of the brand first. And that was actually very uh, well planned on our part because from for us, we kind of came into this late. We got brought into this process. You know, it's been going on for two years, but our team uh, is relatively new and we got shown the jerseys in April. So we had to take the jersey and create the brand instead of, you know, what most teams hope to have with anything is the brand is a part of the jersey and you're kind of doing it all together. Uh, we had a month to really build out this brand campaign and build out you know, how we're going to show this to the world. So we took the color palette, which is the green, the purple, and the white. And ultimately, you know, for us in a regular season, purple is our main color. Uh, so going into this, we knew that we really wanted to highlight the green and really showcase people why this jersey is different and how this is a brand within a brand, essentially. Uh, we took the pieces and the patches from the jerseys and created, you know, a storyline and a brand just around those obviously mountains uh we also wanted to bring in animals and nature uh as well as this like nature guide feel with you know paperback books and anything that kind of just feels what is colorado like what is it like being in nature um so we answered the question what is colorful colorado 
and really we we just kind of brought that to life uh from a brand visual perspective yeah and madison uh who is is one of Aaron's assistant social media coordinators. Uh, she does a, she is an amazing graphic designer. Um, and, and so watching her just kind of create, you know, a, a board for a mood board first, and then figure out that she kind of wanted like a, almost a field guide look um, to really uh, capture Colorado. I think she did a really great job hand drawing animals and, and getting, you know, all the details of Colorado wrinkled paper, um, it all just really came together. I think there's more slides. I don't really show that. Did I click something? There we go. Um, so kind of like he alluded to, our team is pretty small. Uh, it was actually our social assistant who ended up kind of taking on this brand, which I have so much kudos to her. She absolutely crushed it. Um, but, you know, we, we didn't have necessarily a giant creative team in order to pull this off. So we really all had to come together in order to make this happen and just kind of take it on and we all, I, it just went really well and we ended up making it happen um, from a social perspective in terms of strategy we knew that we had to utilize every single platform uh, make sure that we're hitting all of our different audiences that we have uh, but within that i really wanted to make sure we're embracing what's best for each platform we might be a small team we might be under a small deadline but for us in a small market in order to make the reach you really have to be able to be specific with your content to make sure that it's done right for each platform so we took you know maybe like our look and feel and we made things for every single platform in it in order to tell that story the best example i have here is our uniform guide which this is half of it it didn't all fit on the slide but i wanted to give enough examples to kind of show you guys uh being able to tell the story within an instagram carousel is very easy for the fans to understand um you know you can have videos which we did i'll show those on another slide but we want to continuously be able to tell people this is what the jersey is this is what it's about and that's you know again goes back to the nike part of yeah you have to tell the story of the jersey um we wanted to make sure that everything related back to colorado we didn't want there to be any question that this jersey is anything but us and anything but colorado so again whether it's the pictures or the graphics, no matter what it was, it was going to be green and it was going to feel very Colorado. Um, I really wanted to let the creative do the talking. We wanted to simplify copy from a social perspective. We wanted people to really, you know, go in, look at all these graphics that we spent so much time on, really embrace all the photos and enjoy the art within it instead of just over overloading people with copy. And then I wanted to make sure that it matched with our, our website, our in-stadium elements. We, it is something that we're continuously working on is making sure we do a really great job of branding everywhere so that people, it feels very consistent. And this was a really great step in the right direction uh, for our marketing team, which I think I have examples on the next slide. Yeah, sweet. Uh, so from social, again, every single platform, that might've been Instagram on the last slide. On this one, you can see Instagram stories. We had tons of different elements uh, in order to, you know, again, continuously embrace that Colorado feel in the green. We got to build out an entire uh, new web page for this, which was ultimately like a long scrolling one with animations and designs, but again, looks very similar to everything you see on social. And then even to our email team, being able to work with them to uh, tell a story in a simple way, as well as where the inspiration came from, our photos, when it's gonna be on the field, how you can shop. Uh, everything was very, very consistent for us. And uh, as crazy as it sounds, it was pretty new for us. So we were really proud of all the work that that went into this to make it not only look beautiful, uh, the jerseys themselves, but all the creative behind the scenes uh, look visually appealing. Uh, we, I tried to like simplify these for some short little video clips. Uh -oh. We have in the upper left, right, uh, the one that he's on right now, you have uh, our main launch video, uh, our video guy, who's also a fantastic animator, created the one that you see with the jersey in the locker, which helped people to visually see, you know, the entire jersey itself, one of our top players, and then all the different elements that, again, are on the jersey and how they relate to Colorado. We tried to bring out the the player personalities a bit on TikTok, which 
is again a new thing for us as well as them. So it was a lot of fun to, you know, just grab grab a cell phone and get them to be able to do some simple transitions. And then we also worked with MLB The Show in order to highlight the fact that the jerseys were going to be, you were able to play them like in the game on June 3rd, which was the day before we wore them on the field. So we had our animator uh, get into the game and screen, re screen record, selecting the jersey, and then obviously some gameplay highlights. So not only did we obviously use photos, but video was uh, a part of this as well. And being able to, again, every platform got its own thing that fit. We didn't try to, you know, just use that launch video uh, where it wasn't going to perform well or wasn't going to be able to tell the story about the jersey in the in the right way. So that's the video side of things. <laughs> Sweet. Sorry, I'm a, I'm a terrible uh, transition no, you're good. clicker. But, but this is our team. Uh, and so uh, in the top right, you have David there, um, who, who did that awesome graphic of the jersey spinning around and a lot of uh, kind of the B-roll at our shoot. Um, below him is Madison looking sweet with the Super 8 camera. We had a Super 8 camera. We haven't got the film scanned yet, but um, seeing as this launch was kind of like a, a four year kind of thing, we're not, we don't need to throw all of our um, eggs in one basket. We can kind of spread things out. and so um so we she actually didn't she's just holding the camera i don't think she used it jeff lewis who is in the top left corner that's kind of our part of our crew aaron had left because she had a phone call by then um but that's our crew we did a, a selfie we put a cell phone on the hood of a car and just kind of pointed it in our direction and luckily it didn't blow off but um so we have jeff lewis we have uh megan we've got Corey. um there's harrison Harrison's also below that group photo holding what is a go uh, flashpoint 600 with a beauty dish um, that's kind of what we used to light um, all of the photos uh, he did a great job of holding that thing it was heavy uh, uncomfortable and he was just getting tossed by the wind and I would every once in a while I'd like grab it to bring it down and so uh, props to Harrison uh, for for helping me out uh, with holding the light the entire time if I could have had a, a, another light a second light um, I probably would have, but it probably would have blown down the mountain at that point if someone wasn't holding it. So we went with one light and the sun. Um, and then uh, we've got David, we've got Madison, JBG, myself, and Clara. Um, so Kara. So uh, that's kind of our whole crew. And then here's the bottom left photo is is Harrison at our um, our our site when we were kind of trying to find the right spot this is the first photo we took there and i said i think this will work and and so this is one of the photos that corey who's in the bottom right on um, from opening day i'm super pumped that it's opening day by the way um showed all the players and and so this great photo of harrison taking a picture with his fuji talked all those guys into coming up to uh take take pictures up at loveland pass um this was kind of our nike city connect workflow um, we shoot on Sony's. Uh, it was a Sony A1. It went straight into the hard drive, so we didn't lose any of the photos. Um, and then uh, we drag that folder into Photo Mechanic, kind of make our selects out of Photo Mechanic. Uh, that goes into Lightroom. We make our, our edits, and then our final edits went back into Photo Mechanic so we could kind of tag what players were in or in the photos. Um, and that helps in the long run when we're putting things into Photo Shelter and trying to um, get them into green fly so the players can see them. Um, so that was kind of the workflow uh, of the editing and the, the tagging. Um, the final photos that were tagged with the players' names and everything were then put into Photo Shelter. Um, we used kind of like a secret folder that only people who had the link could access. And uh, if they s shared that link with anyone else, um, they really weren't, those people wouldn't be able to see it. Um, so that was a key part of, you know, kind of keeping the jersey. Uh, secret and not leaking um, that folder link could be sent to nike um, it could be sent to local media and national media um, and then we use greenfly and so through an ftp on photo shelter uh, we just uh, add greenfly as a tag to any of our players names and if their name is spelled correctly which it was um, then we hit an ftp send it and it goes straight to the player's phone if they actually check greenfly uh, we made sure that uh that the players who did participate in the photo shoot got their photos uh, texted to them as well. Corey sent all of the players um, some selects that we wanted to see on social media when we did do the release. 
Um, but I think all the local and national media got uh, or were delivered the, the final photos and some video like 10 minutes before the launch and there was a little embargo so they couldn't share it right away. But um, luckily everything went as planned and, and nothing really leaked. So that's kind of our Nike City Connect workflow. Um, if you're looking at our normal game day workflow, um, it's it's similar um, except for when we're sitting in the photo well. Uh, we go from our Sony to um, a, a photo shelter uploader folder so social media can can download uh, the photos in game. Uh, we connect to Wi-Fi on our cameras and the Sony's have built-in FTP um, but if, if it wasn't working you can also send through Ethernet. So say Charlie Blackman hits a home run um, or Chad Cool threw a, a three hit shutout last night against the Dodgers uh, and he like screams towards the, the dugout. We take that picture and it's in photo shelter uploader uh, for Aaron and her crew uh, within, I don't know, 30 seconds, depending on how fast the Wi-Fi is, but our Wi-Fi is pretty great. Um, and then her crew takes it uh, and then they put it into their their slate and, and that kind of is where, uh, I don't know much of that end. So I'll let Aaron talk about that, but let me get through the, the other part here is, is we also back it up on a hard drive, throw it in photo mechanic, make our tags, edit uh, keyword things like players and, and what jersey they're wearing and what day the photos were taken. And that goes into our photo shelter account uh, to live in the archive and then to go to Greenfly and, and players or whatnot. Aaron, tell tell everyone about kind of how the connection with Slate. Yeah, so I wanted to, to make a quick plug for that. Photo Shelter has been fantastic for us, not only from the archive and, and ease of being able to get assets very quickly, but also they're they're constantly working to find the best things you know for their users to be able to um, find new ways to be able to share those assets too and slate for us is a huge one um, it we're able to make you know instagram stories branded content again brand consistency was really key for us as, as a part of this launch so just wanted to really shout out that that partnership um, i just really love it it's it's awesome and it's great to see you know photo shelter being able to uh you know make things and make partnerships that are best for their users uh not only for great campaigns but just you know everyday use for us as a part of our normal game day workflow and so what i love about photo mechanic is it's really easy to navigate um there's two screenshots here one is from our archive from 1993 um and and the other one is is a game from our father's day the not the last game we played, but the, the last series we played against the San Diego Padres. Um, and so each season has a folder, um, and in that folder you can make separate folders and galleries. Uh, each season also has a corporate sponsorship galleries. Um, corporate sponsorship is it's really easy to share photos with them. We can tag, uh, you know, DraftKings or um, Breaks Plus or whoever whoever is going to be, uh, and and they can type that in in file search and, and find it pretty pretty seamlessly, um, and we just share it with one link and give them access. And so, uh, like today, we had a, a kids camp, and each kid got their uh, photo taken in front of the scoreboard with their name on it. We're going to put those photos in a in a folder, and I'm just going to give that link to community and and. Uh, community relations and they send that link to every participant's parent and they can download their their um, child's photo so it's it's pretty seamless easy to share um, uploader for social like I said is is super nice um, even I like to go and look you know in the middle of an inning when there's a break to see like what do we have an uploader how is our game going um, edited game folders uh, are great to kind of go back and, and look at to see um, you know what we've done in the past and also social can go in the next day and pull an edited photo a, a nice edited and toned photo for social media the next day um, and then like I said easy to share galleries um, makes it super seamless for us and and so I've never done it any other way and I can't imagine doing it any other way um, it's it's something that is awesome and I the entire organization I think I I brings up photo shelter at least once to me a day. They like, hey, can I get into photo shelter to get this? And so um, so it's really easy to share those galleries with them. And so here's some fun photos before we before we let the questions take over. Uh, some of our favorite, we and, and some good stories too. We we thought we had a Colorado flag that you know one person could hold behind them or wrap themselves in. 
And then when we unfolded it, it looked like they just took it down from the flagpole here at Coors Field. It was massive. It was four four players wide, and uh, it was so windy it was getting pressed up against them. So, um, and then uh, Herman Marquez is from Venezuela. Not a huge fan of the cold. We put the the dugout jacket on him for most of the shoot, um, but he he rocked it. Uh, and he had some Denver flow going there. And then uh, Chris Bryant being the hometown kid, he has mountain tattoos on his arm. And so one big goal of mine Did was- Chris Bryant? Oh, sorry. Did you say Chris Bryant? Oh, sorry. I Chris Bryant? Kyle Freeland, sorry. Um, Kyle Freeland, hometown kid, he has uh, mountain tattoos on his on his arm. And, uh, and one of my big goals was to really get that and the mountains as close as I could to like in line with each other, as long as he didn't look like awkward. And so this is about as close as we got, but- um, coming set, looking right at me with the mountain tattoo is is um, was like the only shot I really wanted in the entire photo shoot. So it was it was pretty cool. And then in the chat, I saw that someone said that we did not have Chuck Nasty, which we did not for this particular shoot. Uh, for his off days, he has a little daughter, uh, his daughter Josie, and he had already had some plans for this particular off day with her, which we absolutely wanted to respect. And it should be noted, though, we did hold a secondary photo shoot slash video shoot on just a plain gray background at Coors in order to shoot a couple more guys that we needed some content from that weren't able to make it up to the mountain with us for various reasons. So we did actually yeah. have some, some content with Chuck Nasty. You absolutely have to. He's a big outdoors guy. Yeah. Uh, it just wasn't at this particular shoot. Um, it was it was actually it's kind of a funny story because we he he was gonna go fishing with his family. He had his thing lined up for, for weeks, obviously, because these guys schedule out their off days like way ahead of time and his family was in town. And and I had mentioned like, I said, Chay Chuck, do you think I could go fly fishing with you? And you put your City Connect jersey on with your waders and just stand in the middle of the river and it thought it would be the most epic photo. And he said, yes. And then he dropped his pin on my phone where he was going fishing. And I did the math and it was going to take like two and a half hours to get to Loveland Pass by the time we got to where he was going to go fishing and so it's you know it's um something maybe I asked for a rain check I don't know if he remembers that I asked for a rain check but uh, I'll remind him I'll be like Chuck remember that rain check the next off day he goes fishing we'll hopefully get him in a city connect in his waders fishing um so that would be pretty sweet but it was cool of him to say yeah you can crash my family's fishing trip uh <laughs> but it was just going to be too too much of a time crunch to actually make it happen. So, but he was kind enough to to shoot on gray along with CJ Crone. So he, CJ and, and Chuck, they they shot. We wanted to shoot him in the fountains, but um, it was that weather that messed everything up. There was a double header the day before, and it was kind of cold. And by the time we were going to get him out there, it was going to be like 11:30, and everyone would be on the concourse. And there's no way we would have kept our jerseys a secret at that point. So we just kept them inside. I think that's yeah, we're happy to start yeah. the Q&A now, if anyone. Thanks so much. That was awesome. Uh, I loved so much about uh, what y'all were sharing. And I know we have a ton of questions uh, coming coming through. I saw, and, I saw uh, yours, Yoav, with the, with the Rockies legends. We do have some plans uh, over the next, you know, couple of seasons to try and, and get, uh, you know, Maybe it's Vinny Castilla, maybe it's um, Larry Walker. Uh, we had some hefty goals, and just unfortunately, with the very short time span that we had, uh, we weren't able to get a few things. But this is a four-year campaign, so we're definitely not afraid to keep all of these creative ideas we have in the, in the bank and be able to do a few more. We also are starting to use, you know, a couple of influencers as well as other local athletes. Now that their season is done, they've won the Stanley Cup. It's even better. Uh, finding ways to, again, you know, share uh, the City Connect aspect uh, within the city of Denver, as well as, you know, other social influencers to get the story out there. Nice. <clears throat> thank you, Aaron. Um, and sorry, Yoav, I know you just you just hopped right back in there. And thank you so much, both of you, for such an anecdotally rich um, campaign story. I mean, I it was so fascinating learning about all the ins and outs. And I have so many questions, and I know that so much of our audience does too. But I know that also Yoav has a quick announcement, um, which I will just hop off and uh, pass over along to you. Nice. Thanks, Larissa and Aaron and Kyle. Thanks so much. Um, but also thanks everyone for joining who's on. It's really great to see some familiar names on 
the call today kind of in the back end here um, and especially our existing customers and clients um, I love that you know people join to learn uh, from each other and kind of you know get inspiration for their own campaigns and how they can modify it um, before we do dive into the Q&A I want everyone who's not a photo shelter customer to pull out their phone and hold it up to the screen uh, and take that QR code um, or if you don't have your phone on you type in this bit.ly link um, as you've heard today from from Kyle and Aaron and if you followed our marketing um, we really believe in photo shelter for brands as a tool that can transform your workflow um, and we hear a lot from teams and organizations that use SharePoint Google Drive Dropbox those kinds of consumer tools or external hard drives internal servers the T drive the S drive whatever um, and endless thumb drives that you're always you know gonna lose off of your keychain or something all of uh, we hear from people all the time who use those tools once they start at photo shelter and start using our tool they love it they transform their workflow um, so I want to invite everybody who's on the call today to start that process it starts with a conversation you'll go to this form on the, the QR code or in that bit.ly link, fill out the, uh, just like your email address pretty much, who you are, um, and then you can schedule uh, a call with our team, uh, just a short kind of 20, 30 minute call so we can understand what your current workflow is, what your current challenges are, and how we might be able to help you with um, our UI, our artificial intelligence, our workspaces. We have this amazing new feature called custom design templates that I think everybody on this call who's not a client or if you're not using those and you're a client and you want to learn more about them, definitely get in touch. Um, so I want to encourage, again, everybody to pop that into their browser, put it on their phone, fill out the form um, and start leveling up your workflow ASAP. Um, the Rockies do incredible work and I know we can all kind of learn from them. And uh, I, I take pride in knowing that Photo Shelter is a part of that. And I, what we want to do is bring that to um, any and every organization. So um, that's it. I hope some people have typed in. If you have any questions, feel free to DM me on Slack or email me um, in, the, or, yeah, in the community. Um, and Larissa, that's it from me. Um, thank you so much. Back to you. I can't wait to hear the rest of the Q&A. Thank you so much, Yoav. Um, I really hope that everyone takes us up on that because, you know, before I even learned about photo shelter and about digital asset management altogether, um, as somebody who's worked in social media for large publishers who are publishing like 80 to 100 unique, you know, organic articles a day, like, Content management, digital asset management is no joke. And if you don't have a serious system um, like the Rockies have, um, you know, I, I just really don't know what to say. I think it's really hard to um, get your message out and to also repurpose content that's useful, that's created once and can be repurposed and repromoted a lot of times um, when you have a jam that you can easily discover and find content in. Um, so now back to the Q&A because we have so many like burning questions from folks. Um, here's one that I think is actually super interesting. So um, how um, have you heard anything from other teams who were also doing the City Connect campaign? And the second part of this question is, are they jealous of your swag? <laughs> um, but yeah, just curious what the feedback has been first from uh, other teams in MLB. I can sure. start if you want. Uh, yeah, go for it. Um, so, I mean, in terms of like other teams, I did um, reach out to a few teams in the process of while we were making it, just to get some feedback from them in terms of things that went well, things that they didn't like, things that maybe they wish they would have done. Um, mm -hmm. We didn't, like, it wasn't in terms of like, cool, you're gonna copy, that was not what we wanted. It was actually so maybe we didn't copy people too. Um, but really just to get their feedback in terms of, you know, things that, uh, in terms of what went well for them, uh, that's really what we wanted to know, uh, as well as, you know, working with Nike, you're working with so many different people, so we really wanted to try and streamline our process, because <laughs> we had such a tight uh, turnaround that I was just like, I'm going to get all the answers from other people, and then go from there. 
And then afterwards, uh, we had tons of people from the MLB social side of things for me reach out and just say that, you know, all the, the assets look great. Everything was branded so well. Your jerseys are fantastic. Fans love the jerseys themselves. We're still number one on yep. ESPN's uh, City Connect list, even though there's now been, I think, two more teams go out. So we're, we're excited to be on top there. But yeah, I, like, I don't think anyone is jealous of our swag by any means. Um, but they definitely loved, you know, how everything looked uh, on the end. And then when we tell them the, the team that we had to do it, everyone is more just shocked that we were able to pull it off. And so it's really just a testament to everyone behind the scenes here beyond just me and Kyle, uh, who really put in so much time and effort to make sure that we did uh, the Jersey justice. And I'm sure Kyle got reached out to on all the photos. So I'll let him talk oh, about yeah. that. Yeah. My, uh, my, I went to coffee the day that the jerseys got released and um, my phone was, I had to apologize like multiple times. I'm sorry. My phone is just like blowing up. Um, but we had a, it was a good experience. My biggest question, and like Aaron, I kind of reached out to people who had done it before or people who I knew were coming up. I said, Hey, how long did you have the Jersey for? Or like, when did you get your jerseys? Cause I was wondering like, well, is this a normal thing? Like um, I'd heard like, um, you know, nightmare stories of like, we got the Jersey two days before the shoot or, or we, or we got the Jersey in spring training. And I was like, Oh man, I would have loved to have the jerseys in spring training <laughs> just to know what they looked like, you know, but, um, but you know, people putting finishing touches and, and making final decisions on them. You can't really can, can control that, but it was, I think we were middle of the road. It seems like everyone, you know, um, it's kind of in a time crunch when, when you have a Jersey release because of how like, you know, tight they keep things to make sure no one, no one knows what things look like. And so, um, but, uh, yeah, I, the ESPN thing is, is awesome. It's cool that they still think we have the coolest city connects. Um, I would have to agree. I think the green is awesome. I mean, and, and for those who don't know, like if you go back and look in our photo shelter archive for at photos of 94, 95, 96, even through 98, there's a ton of green, um, you know, on, on ushers shirts or they're wearing green. There's green balloons at opening day. Um, if you've ever been to Coors Field, all of our seats are green, <laughs> you know, so there's a lot of green. Um, I think that we just kind of moved away from that with, with the brand, but it's kind of cool to see it come back uh, with our city connect and, and if it, fans seem to love it, I see so many city connect hats and jerseys in the stands now it's wild. So. Yeah, fans at first were kind of disappointed in a way. They were like, you went away from the purple. How yeah. can you do that? You're literally the Rockies. And as we, again, you know, we really explained what it was and what it meant. It really helped them kind of like realize, mm -hmm. oh, okay, one, there is still purple on it. We didn't fully go away, uh, but there were, that there really was a purpose and that it's still cool that it wasn't purple. And because of how we embraced, you know, through imagery and, and the storyline, everything, we embraced the green versus trying to, you know, hide it. Other teams, they went the direction where the, their city connect wasn't super different from their normal jerseys. And that's not a bad thing by any means. Um, we just really, you know, we went so different that we all just agreed. We were like, we have to focus on the green. We have to embrace the fact that this is different and hope that fans really uh, understand the why behind it and can like enjoy that story with us. I mean, the the story that you really created around the concept, um, the field guide, the brand elements, I think it's so intelligent, so smart in terms of campaigning, because not only did you just, you know, tease and kind of launch like, you know, a fashion brand drop or something like that. You actually were educating your fan who was already a loyalist on what these elements they could connect with that they're already probably promoting or already super happy to, you know, be rep repping, whether that be through uh, bumper car stickers or uh, like laptop stickers, stickers on like their hiking bag, whatever. Um, there's probably elements of Colorado that they already are super passionate about. Um, and so bringing that out and really creating that field guide um, was something I, I thought was super cool um, and, and necessary really. Um, and you don't really see that with sports brands, like building an entire story around uh, the rebrand. One of the actual questions was, was the jersey already green or was green already in the palette? So you kind of answered that within the question. Um, thank you for that. Um, 
So I don't know if you mentioned this, but I told you I was going to ask you this on our dress rehearsal the other day. Mm -hmm. But uh, in the photo where you have like snowball, like snow kind of coming off of the the bat, did you mm -hmm. so and I know that the dog ended up eating most of yeah. the baseballs you brought. So did you end up having to hit snowballs like because all of the baseballs were eaten or was it um, you know, was it just because it, it kind of looked cooler or that was part of the concept? There's like two sides to this. Yeah. Um, all along, uh, because again, the guys are pretty fun. We wanted to embrace that personality side. We we thought of the snowball concept, but we also did baseballs. In the end, in terms of what, you know, the people saw, uh, mm -hmm. like in this chat, we will definitely tell you we had pictures, you know, and video of the guys hitting baseballs into the mountains and it looks fantastic. It's we awesome. absolutely love it. Uh, but we didn't end up using it because we didn't want people to, you know, make these assumptions that we're hitting baseballs into, you know, nature where there's animals. Uh, we didn't want there to be any issues. You know, Colorado is so conservative in terms of, you know, its nature and their animals and the things that are, are going on in a national park, which technically Loveland Pass is, that we didn't want people to, to assume the wrong thing when here we are trying to embrace nature and this look. Uh, so we ended up, you know, only using the the snowball side of things yeah. because it just, you know, tells that again, that that story of who we are as Coloradans. Um, and, you know, maybe one day, you know, some behind the scenes of, of the baseballs will we'll get out there, but we're going to we're going to let it sit for a little bit and we don't yeah. want people to come after us. <laughs> They'll live yeah. in the archive. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right, exactly. Um, so following up about uh that kind of like state pride um and and really hometown pride that's what we're, we're really talking about today rooted in the nike city connect campaign because um you know there has been so much excitement around colorado winning the stanley cup um even though it's a you know it's a different um sport how do you all uh so kind of support and celebrate each other honor each other as pro sports people you know um within the state is that something that you all are kind of generating some either content or just like super excited for um them in general and and your state i mean so exciting yeah i mean both uh it helps you know when we have some fans of the team on our team so yesterday we had kyle freeland he was he was wearing uh, a kale mccarr jersey during batting practice just like roving around the field turning double plays like pitchers do during batting practice um with his kill mccarr jersey on and so i went over there and took some photos of him doing that and he had a bet with one of our coaches who was a big lightning fan um and so uh pj was walking around with a, also an avalanche jersey on even though he was not a fan so um but but we we've done a lot i know aaron can chime in on like you know the connection that she has with their social squad which are really awesome so yeah, we we all try to work together like pretty well and, and have good relations uh, with all of us. Uh, a big thing that I've tried over the past year beyond just City Connect itself is really trying to develop this like one city, one team type of concept where we all, you know, make content for each other. We're all willing to go a little bit above and beyond your stereotypical, hey, good luck, Rockies, good luck, Broncos, and congrats, you won X whatever it might be, just kind of go above and beyond that content. Um, I don't find that, like, personally, like, the most supportive that you can be within a city. So we kind of took the Avs uh, because we have, like, the best relations with them across our entire marketing team. All of us know their team very, very well. Mm -hmm. And our VP actually used to uh, be on the KSC side of things. So, like, those relationships are there. And we were kind of like, how can we try and, and test some new things out in terms of being super supportive and almost overly supportive of different teams without it feeling like we're piggybacking on anyone. And while we're still the Colorado Rockies embracing mm -hmm. the other teams. So back in the off season, we actually went and covered an avalanche game, like fully completely did like an overhaul of our, our brand look and feel for all things abs. We did giveaways. We covered the game like it was one of ours tried to you know bring baseball terminology to hockey which was hilarious they ended up winning the game with in uh overtime which was crazy so that was a lot of fun and then throughout this season uh starting you know back in spring training for us up until now really just trying to tell the story of the abs you know going on this huge run and again we do have fans of the abs in our clubhouse so we use them for a lot of different asks we tried to keep it fun 
And it actually kind of all came together this past week when the Avs have their like all the small things song and the Avs got the rights to the song uh, for social. And so she literally reached out. She was like, I don't know what you can do with this, but like find some sort of content that you can do with the guys with all the small things. And I was like, okay, that's a very not super specific ask, but I'll see what I can do. And ended up having them do like a finish the lyrics type concept. Mm. Um, and we had to go out on TikTok uh, before they won, but we held off on one specific one in hopes that they would be able to do it in the third period of one of their games uh, to win the cup. And we ended up posting it. Uh, everyone loved it. The fans were just like, it just excited to see us, you know, being super supportive in a different way. Uh, they ended up writing an article on NHL.com about it. I'm sure the players have been asked about their singing voices. They're probably going to sign a record contract. Who needs baseball anymore? <laughs> but yeah, it's just like a lot of fun to really work with them uh, and embrace, you know, who they are as the abs while still, you know, being the avalanche. And now I hope to be able to do it with the Nuggets, the Broncos, everyone. I know that they want to come out to a game, hopefully with the cup now. So we mm. might have the Stanley Cup at the at Coors. That would be really cool. But yeah, I think it's super important to uh, embrace, you know, your city and how we involve City Connect into that is still is still, you know, in the works. But right. um, I think teams can really just I hope the lesson out of this is that you can you can work with the other teams. You can support your teams. You know, it's not going to ruin ticket sales. It's not going to do any like anything bad. And being able to fight for that, you know, within your your digital departments to really work together, um, I think just has so many benefits. And I think you just have to be willing to try things a little bit different and see what happens. Yes, Erin, talk about taking risks. Let's go. <laughs> um, I mean, I that resonates so deeply with me. As somebody who's worked across so many different uh, industries, across so many different brands, with so many different brands, the competitor um vibe it just doesn't really fit anymore um so i really love your you know your energy and your uh commitment to really trying to connect all of the different professional sports teams together under this really like we're coloradans let's go let's be proud of each other um and let's celebrate each other i really love that i think more people need to more brands in general more organizations need to take on that attitude so i hope that folks have learned of it here um and don't feel uh you know like they're like there's any kind of barrier to reaching out because if you don't ask you can't create so um yeah i take that very seriously yeah. it's going to take time it's going to take a lot of buy-in it takes a lot of trust um but being able to continuously fight give examples um having a willingness on your own side to be like we really want to do this we want to promote your brand you should probably take advantage of that um is something that kind of helped us but also right. you know uh, dot your I's, cross your T's, get your legal things in order. I'm not going to say that we, you know, from the very beginning, we definitely, you know, we were very ambitious. And because, you know, we have relationships, you know, things got going. And then all of a sudden, you know, people are like, wait a minute. Yeah. <laughs> and we're like, oh, okay. Right. <laughs> um, but no, it, it's been great. And, you know, it hasn't run into any like, actual problems. But oh. it's just a reminder that, again, we're all entities. We all want to work together. Uh, mm -hmm. So just do it properly. Yes, ask there's, and there's uh, uh, all of that <laughs> for permission or ask for forgiveness, not permission. Yes. yes. <laughs> Live your life that way, you'll get part. Yes, exactly. Um, so if we could just end on one last little piece of advice for anyone who's listening, who found this riveting, who wants to move from, you know, operations, potentially creative, or wants to entice more teams to work together and like work on more creative things. Um, with even really tight deadlines and really large goals. Um, what are uh, is any pieces or any words of wisdom or advice that you can give uh, to fellow creatives in either the sports industry or those looking to get into the sports industry uh, in the creative marketing arena? I sure. think my advice is going to be be willing to do things maybe that aren't typically maybe on your plate or you know be willing to try something that feels really big to you and that maybe your title doesn't hold, but go out and maybe try it and see what, and kind of see what happens. None of this would have come about if maybe, you know, 
my social assistant wasn't willing to kind of take on a creative director role with this entire, you know, brand campaign. Maybe it wouldn't have come together if, you know, myself wasn't willing to take on things from in stadium to to web to email to whatever it might have been if I just stayed in my lane and just thought about social content. Um, for us, this came together because a lot of people were willing to to wear a lot of hats. And I know that gets a bad rep sometimes in the sports industry. Oh, we have to be a jack of all trades. Oh, we have to do these things. Uh, and sometimes that is the actual case. And it's going to come out a lot better on, you know, at the end when you have a lot of people who just all have that same vision. And if you're willing to put in the work and willing to just try new things, uh, really anything is possible. And it might just, you might just surprise yourself on what you can do. So that's my advice. <laughs> yeah. I'd say maybe focus focus on relationships, you know, that you, that you have, because none of this would have happened if the players were like, uh, I don't, I don't do photo shoots with Kyle and, and his crew or, or like I did a photo shoot with Kyle and it sucked, you know, or, or something like that. And so, um, you know, just focus on, on relationships that you have and it could go back to, and I think you can intertwine that with, with networking. Um, I get an in, inbox message probably once a day on my Instagram of how to become a sports photographer and, um, I think networking and, and who you know is is really important and being reliable, you know, uh, is almost more important than being a, a really, really great shooter. Um, and so if someone knows they can count on you, they're going to ask you to keep doing things for them or 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 join their team or or apply for a job. And so um, if it comes when it comes to like getting into the sports industry, I'd say networking and being reliable is super important. When it comes to, you know, making things happen on a large scale, like a, a jersey release and needing, you know, your big guys in uh, on the team to to buy in is is just having that really great working relationship, um, mm -hmm. you know. And so, and so I think that was really important. Yeah, I, it's so weird because some in some way it felt very easy for us to get the buy in in. Again, you, you have to do the ask. It's a very hard ask, but and in a Corey, way Corey it could have yeah, Corey's fantastic. I yeah, we're gonna give all the all the credit to Corey, definitely. Um, but they could have easily said no. They they could have said no, it's my off day, I can't do it, I don't wanna do it, you're not you're not this, this, and this. And instead of you know getting that immediate no harsh feedback, it was okay, give me more details and and we'll see. And that came back to all the hard work that our team has put in to, for these guys to really trust us and for them to care about, you know, creative things that involve them. And that's not an easy task. And I'm pretty sure every sports team or brand, you know, has some sort of difficulty with it. So um, for us, where it was that easy, um, I do agree with Kyle. It came back to uh, the players really do trust us uh, that we're going to do exactly what we say and it's going to look great. Right. So be reliable, be uh, creative and actually be honest about what you're trying to produce and potentially everybody will be on board. I think that's like pretty great advice. And I can't wait to also share with folks after this, there's a bit more of the story in there about how Corey, their uh, PR um, liaison, if you will, um, kind of really helped advocate for what this vision of this campaign was to the players. Um, so potentially we will also chat offline a little bit more about that and how that came to be in that relationship. Um, and we'll have more to share with you all. But um, for now, thank you both so much for sharing all this fantastic advice, incredible, incredible best practices, and just your actual creative story. Um, I am don't know you personally besides this and besides the screen, but I'm so proud to know you um, and can't watch uh, you work. Uh, can't wait to watch you work uh, and grow uh, from here. So thank you both for sharing your time and sharing your insights with us. Thanks for having us. We really appreciate it. And if anyone has more questions or they were too afraid to put it in the chat or they just want to learn, you know, even more from Kyle or, or myself or even, you know, other folks on our team that helped pull this off, uh, we're always happy to answer. Feel free to hit us up on LinkedIn, Twitter. You can give us our emails, whatever it is. We're always happy to answer because, yeah, we really are proud of this campaign. And, you know, if anyone has whatever they want to know, like we're always happy to share it.
I appreciate that so much. I never like to just, you know, offer people's uh, pro professional and personal uh, social links, but we will share and gather a couple of those um, into the Slack channel. And um, if you're actually in the Slack channel still, you can just at mention Kyle or Erin. They're both in there and they'll answer your questions too when they have time. Thank you both. Have a great rest of your afternoon and thank you to everyone who is watching. Thanks, guys. Thanks, everyone. Bye.